I'm with uh, Annette Albert at uh, the Talk About Local conference. Annette's been running a uh, more than a blog, an online community in W14 and SW6 London for the last two and a half years. So uh, what have you learned during that time? I've learned that um, W14, in particular West Kensington, didn't have um, a central meeting place and that as a borough, Hammersmith and Fulham, where West Kensington is in, um, is very transient. And it, and it showed that the creation of W14 brought people together without going to a community centre, a park, or a, a, a central meeting place. They could, everybody could meet online, and that's been the most important thing. And um, We were talking earlier and talking about you know, close-knit communities that you might have in a locality, and one might think, well, that's a great place for lots of people to start posting stuff up online. Um, but there's some quite difficult dynamics there sometimes, I think. Yeah, I, I find that, um, I mean, people are starting sites on estates, and um, whereas West, West 14 covers the whole area. And people, some people do not want to blog on, on an estate site or a residence association site because it, they want a quiet life with their neighbours. You know, they don't want to sort of put their head above the parapet so to speak, and um, so in a way, if they join a larger site, they don't have that problem. You sort of, I don't know whether it's milk down or whatever, but a small, a small estate or a residence association can make life can make life difficult for residents, for some residents. They're looking over their shoulder a bit more as to what their neighbours might. Uh... Yeah, they're, they're thinking about what you know. What will the neighbours say? What will the neighbours think? You know, and also there's quite a bit of jealousy when people are involved in running. Um, local community websites you know it's um, sort of like I mean I have heard this sort of saying you know she really has got above herself you know so it's, and it can be quite unpleasant so you know I think it's better if it's if it's on a wider scale and does that mean that through your site people are meeting others in the area that they wouldn't otherwise do so people may be involved in small community groups and so on but you're making wider connections Absolutely. I mean, I, um, it, 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 is, it is quite amazing and people find that they have a subject which, is, which brings them together, whether it is sort of like empty shops or a particular empty shop which was, which was empty for like 10 years or there's something, with, there's something wrong with the local underground station or there's a huge development taking place. And that is of interest to everybody in the area and people do meet other people. I mean, I have worked it out that there are friendships have developed offline which is fantastic and is it important that sites like yours are run by local people and residents uh, are you finding that local authorities and others would really like a little bit more say and a little bit more control absolutely you hit the nail on the head i mean you know i think funders and institutions are very nervous of letting the community run the sites you know, it's, um, it's a sort of a sense of control over it. But also, um, you know, the sites are fun to run and you can make a name for yourself. So if you're working in, let's say, the local authority or you're working for a funder, you know, and the site becomes successful, there can be an element that can become difficult between the funder and the person running the site. So if you were starting again now, would you set up the same sort of site or would you go on Facebook and Twitter or what? I most probably would go on to WordPress. Um, I, th I think that WordPress looks, it looks easier. Um, but, I mean, I'm with Ning, and it's, which is getting better, but it has proved very difficult to, to operate for somebody who is completely useless with technology, you know. But... Um, Are you getting other people to help now? People are helping. Um, you know, it's taken a bit of time for people to get confidence. You know, it took me 18 months to really feel, you know, that I wanted a blog. You know, like I sort of, you know, I could always find an excuse not to blog. So, I mean, other, other people, I mean, have the same problem. You know, so once they put something up and they get used to it, it it's fantastic. You can see them developing and, you know, we, we all connect, we all communicate. You've demonstrated it's possible to create uh, an online community around a postcode, which um, helps 
build perhaps some community identity? Well, I think the, re the reason why I started it around a postcode is because I live in West Kensington and residents in West Kensington really weren't, weren't quite sure where, where we lived. I mean, you could ask six residents where they lived and they, one would say, well, West Ken, one would say Fulham, one would say um, Hammersmith, you know, so it was a way of identifying, it was an identifying process. And uh, finally, do you think you can keep going on a voluntary basis? What's your feeling about funding and business models? Well, I think um, oh, I, I, would, I would take money, absolutely, no, no, <laughs> no problem. Um, but, I mean, it, it does need, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of money to run a site. But if you really want to progress it, and I really want to progress it, it is going to take funding, yes.